Hello, everybody. Help, welcome to day one of our 30 day challenge here in the East Coast. I know that our Australian friends already started yesterday because of the time difference. And um, I've already gotten so many responses. I mean, we are basically at 400 people right now across the world doing this, which is incredible. Um, before we get into the subject at hand, I do want to tell you guys, if any of your friends or anybody watching is just now learning about this challenge and you want to start now, it's never too late. It's never too late to start working on yourself and doing this kind of work. In fact, you are always the right time, the right place in the right time. So please don't hesitate to email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com and I will send you the 30 day template. If you want to shift the dates, that's totally fine. Um, this is just a template and it's, it's something I put together that you can use going forward whenever you want to use it. And so if you want that template, just email me. No worries. Again, it's never too late for you to start working on yourself. Never. You know, as long as you're alive and breathing and you have a body, then now is the perfect time to start, right? It, it doesn't matter. You didn't miss the boat. I promise you, you didn't miss the boat. As far as the gifts at the end of the month, it's going to be a raffle anyway. So it's going to be picked at random. So there's no like nothing you have to do to qualify. You just have to send in your name and email and that's it because it, the names will be picked at random. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk to you guys about. First of all, um, I kind of wanted to tell you guys how I discovered Marnie Alton, the bar teacher that you worked with today. I don't know if I've shared this story before. Um, so many people, especially in the support group on Signal, which again, that link will be down in the description box below if you want to join the support group, had never done bar before or had never done bar by Marnie Alton before. And I think a lot of people were very shocked by how sore and how sweaty they got during this exercise because of course it looks easy. Usually if it looks easy, that means it's probably pretty hard. Um, so how I discovered Marnie Alton. So back in 2016, I broke my sacrum. I actually broke my sacrum in a Mysore room, uh, not here in Atlanta. I was actually in another state completely with a totally different teacher and I got a bad adjustment and that I had my legs behind my head and my legs got pulled a little too far behind my head and it popped my sacrum. And so um, I broke it. And that's a really hard place to have a break. Uh, you can't do a whole, whole lot. Like there's no casting or anything like that. I maintained a practice throughout that whole time. I was a uh, very modified practice, but I still got on my mat. I still moved. And after a while, I was just really an emotional wreck over this break. Um, I was having a really hard time um, regaining some stuff. And it was bringing up a lot of frustration and a lot of anger for me towards the person who who broke my sacrum because this particular teacher is not a nice person. And so I think that kind of um, really like triggered me a lot, which was good, which is I needed that trigger. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but throughout this course, I was getting very emotional about not being able to heal my body. My arthritis started to get bad again. And one of my best friends who lives up in Canada, he's been on the show before Mike and Chris, he um, is a movement expert. He told me that I should try to incorporate some bar classes during the week. He had been, he's, he studies all sorts of movement. He's really fast and fascinated with the human body. He's in school to be an osteopath right now. He's also a Reiki master. I met him in India. So he's an Ashtanga teacher, but he, he'll go and study like Pilates. And um, he had just taken a bar course. And he was like, I think you need to incorporate just a couple of classes during the week of bar, just to really focus on restabilizing your core and your glutes to help your sacrum. And so I did that. I, I went to a few classes here in Atlanta and I wasn't really feeling the classes. It, it frankly was not that challenging. The classes here were not that challenging for me. So I, I kind of felt like that wasn't what I needed. And so I just kind of left it. And then right before lockdown happened, I was considering that again. And I had tried some Pilates and stuff too. And Marnie Alton's uh, YouTube that I shared with you guys this morning popped up on my feed. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to try this on YouTube and see if it's any different. And you know, it can't hurt, right? It's 45 minutes, whatever. It can't hurt. And so I tried her, her bar and it was different than the other bar classes that I had done live in Atlanta. And I really liked it. I really liked her. I really liked her energy. I liked what she had to say. And so uh, for, uh, during my healing process, I would do my six days a week of my Ashanga practice, but a couple, two to three days a week in the afternoon, I would do this 45 minute bar just to reset, stabilize my core and my glutes. Well, around that time, I had reached out to her on Instagram um, regarding my sacrum because I just had some questions to see what her perspective was. 
And she was so kind. She got back to me immediately. We had a full on conversation. She was very generous with her time, very kind, very loving. And at that point, she was teaching out of her studio in Los Angeles. Well, when lockdown happened and I lost my Shala, um, she also eventually lost her studio as well. Of course, in Los Angeles, it was way more intense. And I remember when she lost her studio, she kind of made a statement about it. it was very sad, but she moved all of her classes onto an online platform called M as in Marnie M backslash body, which I'll put a link to that in the description box below. And so what I did was I actually joined her platform. I do it month by month. And um, I started doing some of her full length classes some of her harder classes with the weights and the movement ball. And it really targeted I realized that it was, it was making me so freaking strong and my practice, my yoga practice, all of a sudden just jumped forward by leaps and bounds. Like something about the way Marnie was teaching transfixed everything that I was working through in my practice. And so ever since then, I've been a huge supporter of hers. And I can tell that when she teaches her bar classes, especially on her own platform, where she has more, where she can talk more, she does Q and A's a lot. Um, she has really, really studied energetic body. I can tell by the things that she says, even though she's coming at this from more of a workout versus a practice, she is very much incorporating the spirituality into the physical, into it. And I can tell by the way that she choreographs her own classes, what type of emotion she's trying to trigger in you. Um, the ball work, it's really into the inner thighs, which you're not going to do the ball work on the YouTubes. It's no equipment. But if you do do the, the, the workout uh, website, you'll see that you can get the ball and squeeze the ball. And it's really going to, that's going to trigger Molabunda. And so there was a lot of healing that took place for me with Marnie Alton. At that time too, because I lost my Shala, I started speaking out more about my political beliefs on YouTube. And I had other yoga teachers threaten me that they were going to try to get my authorization taken away because of my views. And so I was feeling very down about the community that I had been a part of for so many years. And I felt very uplifted by Marnie Alton's community, even though I'm not vocal, like she has a platform, she has a group, all those things where they all know each other. I'm never really vocal, but just seeing how kind she is to her, um, her clients, her students, uh, in the beginning of her live classes, she's always interacting with the people. She's so kind to people's children. In fact, one of a little girl made her a friendship bracelet and mailed it to her. And she was, she wears it now, you know, she's just such a kind person. And that kindness really, really was important to me at that time. And so not only was my body trans tr uh, changing and healing and my practice was getting stronger, but I all of a sudden felt supported again. Um, by a community that I didn't even know. And so that's what I say about her. Now, she's not the person that knows the intel that we know. She doesn't know about Mr. T, all that kind of stuff. But in my opinion, she is already very ascended because she's healed a lot of herself. You can tell she has worked hard on herself in order to be able to now help other people. And so I'm a huge, huge, huge supporter of hers. Her method what she's created has literally changed my body it's literally changed me and i will forever forever be so grateful to her um, for putting herself out there and um, one of the prizes at the end of this month one of the raffles is for a gift card to have access to her her website for a month so you too can partake in all of her classes and all that kind of stuff i have reached out to her on instagram again i want to get her on the channel and talk with her about the spiritual body, but I don't know if she actually checks. When I talked to her before, I don't think she was as popular as she is now. And so I think she was checking her messages, but I don't think she actually checks her message. I don't check my Instagram messages at this point. And she has far more, far more followers than I do. So I don't blame her if she's not checking me. That's overwhelming um, when it's just you. And so what I might do, I might give it like a month or so, and I might just email her and see if I can get a hold of her through her business to see if she'll come on and talk more about her life. Um, I did post one of her interviews on uh, the community tab. I'll repost it on the description box below where she talks about kind of her, her come to Jesus moment, her, 
you know, the, the work she's had to do in her life and the, the certain situations that have come up in her life that have, have brought her to this place. And so I thought that's really important to share because I think sometimes we do look at people. I mean, Marnie Alton is beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. She's very fit. She's in her mid forties and she looks like she's 25. You know, she's from an interview I listened to of hers a while ago. She's been happily married for like 15 years. You know, she's just seems to have everything together. And so I think sometimes when we see people like that, we just assume that everything's been easy for them and that life has been easy for them, but that's never the case. No one gets out of this world alive. We all have our crosses to bear. She talks about growing up poor and having to like establish herself and figure out how to run a business. She talks about all the struggles that she went through. And so I'm, I'm going to place an interview down, down in the description box below because those stories, I believe, are what connect us as, as humans. You know, as far as the physicality, I always say, don't compare somebody else's chapter 10 to your chapter one. Yes, Marnie Alton is very, very, very fit, but she's been doing it for like 14, 15, 16 years. Same as me. I've been doing this for 16 years. Of course, of course, logically, my level of fitness is going to be higher than someone who is just now starting. Of course it is. That's just science. It doesn't make me better. It doesn't make me a winner. It just means that I'm in more of a place to help the people that have come behind me. And so those who are just starting now, 10 years from now, you're going to be able to be in my position where you can put your hand out and help somebody else out. It's to whom much is given, much is expected, right? And so that's why I wanted to share her story is so that you can see someone like her that seems to just have a perfect life has gone through a lot to get where she is. And she's taken those adversities. She's taken those obstacles and she's, she's healed herself through that friction. And you can tell that through her interview. And that's the opportunity we all have. Whatever obstacle that life gives us, it's, it's not an obstacle, it's a puzzle. Actually, that's something Marnie Alton says. It's not an obstacle, it's a puzzle. It's just a puzzle, right? And you're the puzzle master. She said something once in one of her classes that I really, really liked. Because in our world, in this truther community, sometimes I think we think about that being awake means we know facts. And that's not true. Again, that's edio. That's outside knowledge. There's no difference. What I know and what a black cat knows is the exact same thing. We have the same knowledge. It's what we do with it that counts. And she said something in one of her classes. She was like, we don't fully wake up until we fully come into our body. And that is something that we've been talking about. That's something that Mary Magdalene speaks about in her gospel. We will not ascend until we descend first, all right, which we go into our body. And as Marnie Alton says a lot in her classes, we feel things here. We put our place, our, our bodies in a place to feel things, to feel things. One class she said, there, I'm paraphrasing, she said, there comes a point where this cage we think we've been in, where we realize that cage isn't even locked. We can just push the door right at, wide open. But we can't get to that point until we actually feel things, until we actually come into our body. We descend into the knowing of our body. A lot of times I think that us, in uh, when we embark on spirituality, we think it's so like etherical and, and outside of us. But your body is the most spiritual instrument that you own. Being spiritual doesn't mean talking to spirits. That's not what being spiritual means. Being spiritual means coming into your own spirit, which runs through your fascia, which runs down to your toes, which runs through your feet, which runs down up and down your spine. Talking to other spirits is just like talking to another human. There's nothing spiritual about it. Being spiritual is being in touch with you, your soul, your spirit. And we find that through the instrument of the spirit. What is the instrument of the spirit? It's the body. The body is the Shakti of the six creation of the soul. You know, it's like, that's why I won't go to tarot card readers or any healer that is not working on themselves. That is obviously not working out. That is obviously not doing their own work because how the hell are you going to be able to help me if you haven't even gotten in touch with your own spirit, right? How can you channel me? If you don't even channel yourself through your own pain, through your own body feeling. Okay. And so that is anyway. So what Marnie Alton said was, was very, very accurate. She also talks a lot about being the watcher, which is a huge yoga theory about just observing yourself, observing yourself. 
you know, and, um, and that's what I really, really, really like about her. And I'm so glad that so many of you guys had such a good experience with her uh, YouTube her 45 minute YouTube. That is the main bar YouTube you're going to do over the course of this 30 days. There's another 30 minute one I've put up of hers as well from YouTube. Now, tomorrow, uh, November 2nd, you're going to be doing the exact same workout. And I did this intentionally. Sometimes there's going to be a, rep a repeat of exercises. I do this and I picked everything I did in this, in this challenge. I did intentionally. It was not random. Put a lot of thought into how I wanted the workout schedule to look like. Um, with my knowledge of energetic body, I did it in a certain pattern. Okay. And so tomorrow when you wake up, especially if you're new to this world, you're probably going to be sore. That's a good thing. It worked. That means your body responded. It was supposed to respond, right? And so you're going to have a different experience tomorrow with the exact same workout that you experienced today. And that experience is going to bring you a new information. For some of you, you're probably going to feel better doing it again because you know what to expect. And maybe you'll feel more grounded in your body. Maybe the soreness will bring you to a more grounded place into your body, a, a, a more of a place of honesty and vulnerability in the, in the workout. Um, for some of you, it's going to trigger more emotions, more anger might come up because you're sore, you know? And so that's why we're just experimenting to see how that affects you. Um, if you shake in the workout, good. That means it's working. If you're sweating profusely in the workout, good. That means it's working, right? These are good things. Um, I'm curious to see again, for those who did it early in the morning, how did it affect your day? Do you have a better day today? Do you feel, does your mind feel clearer? Does your body, does your nervous system actually feel more relaxed during the day because you worked out this morning? Is, are you able to handle work better? Are you able to handle your demanding boss better? Are you able to handle traffic better because your nervous system is more relaxed? Um, another thing that came up and I'm so happy. One of our subscribers is a personal trainer over in the UK. I won't say her name, but she had a question about us and she has been working out a lot, replacing some of the, um, workouts I've scheduled with some of the workouts that she normally does. And this is always going to be your choice, but I noticed the workouts that she was doing were more cardio based. And I, I explained this in the comment section and we're going to go deeper into this later in the, um, in the challenge when most of you guys have gotten more adapted to exercising, Back in like the 80s and the 90s, cardio was like the only way people really thought of when they thought about losing weight because it's a big calorie burner, right? And so I think a lot of us, I know this was something that I had ingrained in my head because my mother was a runner. I was addicted to running for a long time. Um, the jazzercise, the Zumbas, all those kinds of things. And as fun as those are, what we now know scientifically about cardio is that it's not ideal for weight loss. It's also not ideal for emotional body information. And this is why when we go into aerobic activity consistently. So if you're doing like hardcore aerobics for an hour, six days a week, what's going to happen to your body? This is how amazing our bodies are. So your body isn't necessarily going to register that you're on the elliptical machine or that you're on the treadmill or that you're in an aerobics class what it's going to start to register is that you're in fight or flight. And so it's going to start to behave as if you were in a war. Now we are in a war, but we're in an information war, but I'm talking about like a physical war. And this is because from our bodies are, are designed with the nerves to also protect our, protect us. Right. Uh, we'll talk about that with backbending with the nerve endings in the front of the chest and what tends to happen with backbending a little bit later on in the challenge. So what tends to happen when people get into the habit of doing intense extreme aerobics a lot is for a lot of people, they're going to have a mad calorie burn, but they're also going to be extremely hungry during the day and start taking in more calories. And then their body isn't going to flush the appropriate calories. Their body is actually going to start to slow down the metabolism because the body thinks you're in a war. And so what happens after a war here uh, historically is a famine. And so your body is going to start to hold on to the fat and hold on to what it needs to so that when you hit famine, it has something to feed off of. Okay. Um, usually people who are, do hardcore cardio, especially if their disposition is Vata end up with higher anxiety because of that. And so it's more of like burning out your muscles versus activating them.
Now, when we look at the opposite of that, like if we look at the bar classes and the yoga, what's really happening is called anaerobic. So all this hardcore cardio is aerobic. The bar, the yoga is anaerobic. Now, what happens with Marnie Alton's bar and with yoga, Ashtanga, is you start with like five minutes of cardio. You, because that, if you do a little bit, it's going to, the good, the good thing about the cardio is it's going to get the heart rate up, which is going to cause your blood, your blood to flush your system more and wake your body up. That's why Marnie Alton only does it for like five minutes. That's why in Ashtanga, we only really get the heart rate up in the beginning of the sun salutations. It's to wake the blood flow up. It's not to put you into an aerobic state, but just to wake up your prana. Okay. But then when we get into the anaerobic, we're building muscle. And so when you're doing the yoga poses that you're holding, or you're doing the squats and bar or squeezing the ball, you're in anaerobic. And this is why the anaerobic is so much better emotionally and physically for you than the aerobic, because the anaerobic is going to pull off of your stored energy. Okay. So the aerobic is just going to grab for any energy it can, where the anaerobic is going to be more, it's not going to be in a stressed out state. The aerobic is going to put you in a stressed out state. Anaerobic is not. And so the body is going to pull from stored energy. Well, what is stored energy? Well, physically that looks like fat, right? That looks like cellulite. That's what's going to pull from to give it energy. Okay. But energetically, what, um, what the stored energy is, is stored emotion. It's the stuck emotion. So over here in the aerobic, we're not even touching the stuck emotion because we're too busy trying to survive. But in the anaerobic, the body can survive. And so it's going to start to pull apart all the stuck stuff. That's why a lot of times uh, dancers and yoga people have very long, lean muscles. Is because of the anaerobic work. Because the body is pulling from stored energy and not frantically looking for any energy it can find. That's also why you find with bar and yoga, the appetite typically doesn't increase. In fact, it might decrease. Because the body is not in, in fight or flight. The nervous system is getting a chance to relax itself into the work at hand. That's why in um, uh, bar and yoga, you're going to be presented with opportunities to actually feel the emotions versus running from the emotion. So sometimes when I have a student that's a big time runner and, have, and is having a hard time putting running away um, are not doing it as much, I'll say, well, what are you actually running from? What are you running? Because you're literally running. What are you running from? Right. Um, so with that being said, the cardio, the kickbox cardio, kickbox cardio is going to be going to be offered. It is cardio. But um, I I've heard many personal trainers who understand this say, you know, if you're going to do cardio, just do it once a week, once a week. That's all you need for your heart to get that exercise and everything else should be anaerobic. OK, um, that's why people lose a lot of weight doing yoga and doing bar two, because they're going into the anaerobic. Uh, the dance with Richard Simmons um, is my favorite. I love it. But the aerobics that he offers you isn't in, as intense as some of the other stuff is. And so the body's going to be able to relax into it and actually have fun. OK, and that's that's why I picked Richard Simmons for the dance stuff, because it's not going to be putting your body in a stressed out state. Yeah. So I just wanted to, to go ahead and had to go over that. Um, you know, sometimes now if you're new to, to exercise, this is not going to be something that you're going to be struggling with right now. But if you're not new to exercise, there are with everything positive, there's also a negative with everything negative. There's also a positive. This is the polarity. Right. So with exercise. There's also the propensity people have to use exercises as escapism. And I know what that looks like. So that's like gardening. Like if you say, oh, I garden. No, you're escaping because you're not coming into your body. You're actually looking at something outside of your body, right? Using uh, exercise as an intellectual, spiritual modality means that you're allowing yourself to actually feel things in your body. You're not distracting yourself with something outside of your body. Yeah. So like gardening is fun and it's good for you to get in the sun and be in nature, but it's not, it should not replace your work. It's just something extra, you know, like playing with your kids in the swimming pool is great exercise, but it's not spiritual work, right? It's great exercise. It's good for your health, but it's not spiritual work. Yeah. And for a lot of people, I think, especially in the Western world, we've viewed exercise in one category where it's like for our, our physical health, which is a great reason to exercise. Don't get me wrong. Being physically healthy and using exercise to keep yourself healthy is amazing. It's a great reason to do it, but it shouldn't be the only reason. Or we do it to abuse ourselves. We, we, um, there's a form of bulimia 
where it's over exercise, where you binge and then you purge on exercise, right? A way to burn calories, to punish ourselves, to get into very um, tight jeans. And that's another reason why I told you guys at the beginning of this challenge, I don't want you weighing. I really don't want you weighing yourself. I don't, I think weighing, I think weighing ourselves takes us away from our body and, 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 and it, it gives us a tool to judge our body from something that's out, outside of our body. I want you guys to put the, the scales away because I want you to really feel your body. You know, I haven't weighed myself since I was 27 years old. The only time I've weighed myself as of late is when my weight got really, really low and I got a hundred uh, uh, below a hundred pounds because there was some health concerns. Yeah. So, but beyond that, I let my body go to the weight that it wants to be at. And for me, at about about five four, my mom says I'm five five. Whatever, um, I, my weight is usually around uh, 110, 115 pounds. That's where my body is comfortable, and that's where it's been comfortable for most of my adult life. That's where my body functions the best is in that weight range. Now, I am also vata. So, for somebody who's five four, five five, who's kappa, your weight's going to be a little bit higher because of your body disposition, it doesn't matter. That's just your body disposition. There is not a one size fits all when it comes to this. And so if you, I can tell in my body now, so if I feel like bloated or if I feeling underweight, I can feel it in my body. My bo I've, I've gotten to the point where my body can now tell me when something's not right. Okay. And so I want you guys to get into that versus what the scales say. Okay. Um, I hope that makes sense. And I want you to, I don't want you, if you're using exercise solely as a way to lose weight, then stop exercising. Just watch what you eat because that should not, because if you're doing it that, if you're doing it for that reason and that reason alone, then you're going to end up abusing yourself in, in the exercise. I want you, regardless of what your weight looks like, I want you to use the exercise as a way to feel things. When you're in the bar and the muscles and the muscles are burning, Hold on a second, guys. That was my update with tomorrow video downloading. <laughs> when you're in the bar, when you're in in the bar and your muscles are burning, I don't want you to think about calories. I want you to bring your mind's eye into the quadriceps, into that area of the body, and feel it. Be there. Lean into that sensation. I want you to think about the fact that you're giving your body the opportunity to burn away old karma, to burn away old patterns. New body is making. That's what my teacher says. New body is making. But old body has to break first. We have to get, get rid of the old. The opposite of war isn't peace. The opposite of war is creation. So we have to have controlled demolition of the old patterning. The body is the minefield. So the thoughts you've thought in your life is, has what caused your body to be in the state it's in. And so we have to work with both the mind and the body to reset patterns. And that, that physical sweat and burn is what's controlled demolition of the old so you can build the new. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And so I hope that makes sense. Um, tomorrow, you guys start your five minute cold shower after you do your exercise. I'm really excited. <laughs> Somebody in the group said, this is the thing I'm most uh, afraid of. And I responded this, then this will probably be the thing you end up loving the most. And if I can do cold therapy, anybody can cold therapy has literally changed my life. I struggle with inflammation because I have arthritis because I'm Vata and I can tell and see it in my body when my joints are inflamed and the cold therapy has helped me so, so, so much. It also, um, if you watch when Hoff's uh, interviews on cold therapy. I placed one of his interviews in the challenge. He talks about how it treats depression. It treats migraine headaches. There's so much that cold therapy treats. And all I'm asking for is just five minutes. So after you do your workout, you get in the shower, you can make the shower warm, shampoo, clean yourself, last five minutes, turn it to the coldest it can be and just let yourself self stand there, get your face. It'll, it'll take the swelling out of your face, out of your eyes, let it feel and just breathe into it and just lean into it and allow it just to feel how it's hitting the cold water is hitting your skin and going into your skin and allowing the inflammation to kind of calm down because at night, one of the bonus challenges is taking a hot bath, the hot therapy at night with the, with the um, salts, the magnesium salts. And so it's just five minutes. Anybody can do anything for five minutes. And over the course of the month, month I'm going to be very curious to see how much the cold therapy has actually affected you, changed your mood, changed your outlook, any, everything like that. So anyway, guys, leave me your thoughts down in the description box below. Tell me how you're doing, um, how you liked morning. 
Um, and once again, if you have any friends or family, or if you're just now watching this, it's never too late to start. Just send me an email at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com. I'm so proud of you guys. You are the storm. By doing this, as Tamara says, um, which will be released later, um, by doing this work, you're going to get more in touch with you, with your gut instinct. And that's the last thing that the controllers want you to do. The controllers want you to be stuck, like, like controllable, you know? And the more you take your power back by really feeling your body, your body's your information highway. It's the best instrument. It's the one thing you're never going to leave in this life is your body. The minute you leave your body, you're done, you know? So get cozy with it. Ask your beautiful body what it wants you to know. What, is, what do you want me to know, right? And if you don't get an answer right away, just wait. The answer will come. It will come. This is not a, a one-time thing. This is a lifetime. It's like Batabi Joy said with yoga practice, one, one year, no good. 10 years, no good. Whole life whole life and so you're starting off for something that's the rest of your life welcome to your new life all right guys and of course be proud of yourself when you see the muscles start to develop and the stomach gets smaller i mean that's the physical sign that that the work is actually working so anyway i love you guys and i hope you're all doing good and i'm really 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 proud of you please share these videos i am heavily shadow banned i don't know if you guys noticed that like it is laughable how shadow banned i am um obviously we're doing something very right on this channel if they shadow ban me this much so make sure you're sharing these videos out to people so that other people can Join the challenge and take their power back too. All right, you guys, love you all and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.